Hello again. So, well, we've witnessed uh, quite the scene. What's there to do? Uh, I, I suppose we should probably go. Oh, should we tell her? The old woman still sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. You're still up? Yes. I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. She slashes the water in the bucket around a bit for a bit. My suggestion is don't. Don't grow any older than you already are. That's old enough. What's troubling your mind? Goodbye, I'm off. I wonder if we can talk to Joyce still. Someone in the comments mentioned a reality lowdown that we can get from her. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? You seem smart. I need someone to give me a lowdown on this reality we're in. This reality? It's related to that medical episode. I have trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Ah, yes. The episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy, now that I think of it. She puts down her thermal cup and looks at you. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be here a while then. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. Hmm. Is this a good time for this? All right. We're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? What is... It remains a mystery what you mean by this something close. This isn't about you. It's about reality. Where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? Hmm. And what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbor, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Okay, that's Martin Mace. What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. What kind of city is Revachol? The great kind. As if it's self-explanatory. Beyond patriotism. A fact. What makes Revachol so great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. And why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connective tissue. It's where the money is. So we're in an unimportant part of an unimportant place. I think it's fair to say so. Martinez is about... She points across the water where the skyscrapers rise. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Look to the sea. Silence. 
She lowers her hand. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition, only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Say nothing. Observe the large body of water swelling, cold. She observes your eyes scanning the horizon, then breaks the silence slowly. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. You're right, Lieutenant. I'll continue later. It's better not to eat all your candy at once. Indeed. I'm always at your service. That's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. <clears throat> All right, yeah, we have uh, more pressing matters than um, talking about reality and all that stuff, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Stop. Now. It is time. For what? Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Wield Ruby's double-barreled pistol. Oh? What a shitty gun. But it's better than nothing. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Oh shit. Oh shit, what, what, what is happening? Where, where's my gun? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 At five. At five. What about this thought? Habakov, magnesium, jamais vu, derealization. Revachol Special Administrative Region, the KU, the Insulindian Ocean, Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command. Name after name, and none of them is familiar. They seem real, but something is wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers on the fridge. Truvant, The Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them. Scratch at the corners, see if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all the thoughts. The one you truly must complete. Oh. Why can't I internalize? What? Unlock. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we've got a gun. What? I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. Kim, what's going on here? Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kipt is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. Her tone is... I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Oh my god. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like that. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he knows it. Peaceful. It 
sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. We're out of time. This is... The Mercenary Tribunal. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. The big one is the damn scam leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Stop! This is the police! Get lost, comedian! You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backward. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. No, he's coming down. I can talk to him. You can't think that way now. This is serious. Big fuck! The voice from beneath the helmet interrupts your thoughts. You only make out the last word. Say nothing. Cross your arms. You. Cortinaire turns his bloodshed eyes to you. You're probably gonna get killed too. I think I'm gonna kill you. I didn't think I had it in me to kill a cop. To your left, you hear the lieutenant cock his gun. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, <gasps> your fingers holding the grip of a gun that has just taken a life tingle. Go for it, it seems to say. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, then move down from that. Please. Talk about hanging a man. I um, I'm worried. Please work. Please work. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you? Sergeant Major Raoul Corton. Reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. He points at the whirling in rags. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. All sentenced to death by lead. He had blue eyes, didn't he? Your colonel. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Listen, you're Lely. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean? Talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic. A nice guy to be around. Yeah. He liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kicked ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points towards the yard. If Lely was here, he would spare the thought of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. Your colonel did not deserve to go out like that. I promise, I will find his killer. 
find his killer. Cop, his killer stands right there. He waves at the man behind you. And you're standing in the way, protecting him. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. This did nothing. You think you were onto something? You just wasted time. Please, act. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Your judgment is impaired. You will regret this. No, 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 no. <sighs> nothing. It's okay. Didn't sound like nothing. Sounded like you were about to break into a sermon. Was that it? Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did then? It was Ruby. Yeah? Who the fuck is Ruby? A suspect. Ruby is a suspect we chased down on the coast. She was hiding. She killed herself, but I know she did it. You think I'm fucking stupid? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? Go ahead. Tell me about some cunt who killed herself one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who- He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Fuck, think, think. Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys <gasps> confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud. In a public place. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. The Paul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover up. Listen. Fucking bias. <gasps> no! God! The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flowed over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That's bad. You need to stop arguing now. This won't be won by talking about the case. They don't care. Fuck! Well, I have a higher chance of um, thinking of an argument. But... Shit, okay. Uh, um... Okay, we can do it. Please work, please. International something. International law. Don't say it. Don't say it. But now you stood there scratching your ass for 1.5 seconds, you think this helps things? Well, hand-eye coordination. All right. This is bound to fail. Okay, what's it gonna hurt if we talk a little more? No, no. We need to act. Let's try to shoot him. If we die, then we can just redo this. <sighs> Fuck. A small explosion expels the bullet from the chamber. With a puff of smoke, it hits the man square in the chest, producing a soft clicking sound in the armor. Go ahead! Give it another try! 
<laughs> Throw the gun at him. Die. No, do nothing. Kill him. No. No, no, I knew it. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. No, Kim, where's Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. Blink, think. You stare down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. Titus, behind you, must be aiming at him right now. Don't forget, there's additional reinforcements. Just survive this. Dodge the shot. Help us on the way. Okay, even. Even chances. The shot no! rings and you stumble. Something violently tugs at your shoulder, pushing you backwards oh, with shit. incredible force. A volcano of burning pain erupts from your left shoulder. The pain flows over your entire body like an awful shock. A grim knowing rises from within. Half of your body must be gone. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly, without trembling. He aims, face pale. Then, two shots ring, <laughs> and you hear a scream. But you're too hurt to see who got hit. Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you. Through all the smoke and panic, and a pistol raised, aiming at your chest, point blank. Then, the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil, and the end. Here it comes. Death. Evaded. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. That's your lower body? Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? You're bleeding out. Nothing. Darkness, blurring lights of pain. Out of it, a silhouette emerges, crouching over you. A familiar voice, filled with urgency and fear. Live fast, die old. Yes, keep talking. Stay awake, look at me. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly, you sense something behind him. A shadow towering. Someone stands there raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. No, Kim! No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. 
The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone. And so is Kim and the whole world. Fall into total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Oh, let me back into the fight. Okay, I need to reread this. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost. A thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs. And feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion core. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. G I'm alive? It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. I'm alive. Sunrise, Arabella. The lieutenant says. He's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. What? The room? It's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Dwamin and curse, and drink water. It's day five. Shit. What about, what's the piss jacket? The piss jacket, Kim, you took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. Okay, I think I missed something here. What happened? What happened? You shot the Major, and successfully, a firefight ensued. What happened then? As retaliation, the rifleman shot you. He hit with his carabine. I was looking for a clear line of sight. When I found it, I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. There's a pause. This is not the first person to die his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Yesterday. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name, they are all that's left. Titus is dead? Yes. Nod. You were bleeding out by then. You warned me. I was able to disarm Cortana before he got the jump on me. Thank you. Although... I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cronel took him. A stray bullet killed the pole, though. And that's what happened. How many casualties on the Union side, total? Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, Angus, the fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. Titus is dead? Yes. He pulls on his cigarette intently. And the Major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Colonel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. There is unveiled anger in his voice. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And that's... All. It's a total shit show, Kim. 
Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. Plus one. Ruby. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornet did not get into the Beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. How bad am I hurt? Pretty bad, officer. You've suffered two wounds. The first is below your shoulder. The bullet passed through your shoulder blade, luckily missing your lung and heart. The second shot hit you in the thigh, the left quadriceps. No major arteries were nicked, but the bullet had to be removed. Bacterial infection was treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. They don't care about me at all. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Thank you. No need. Okay. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again, before your eyes. An orange hue of pain. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. How are you? My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Ephrater. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. She looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, Classy is gone too? Oh yes, she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I asked Mr. Gart. Turns out it was a bad idea not to arrest her, but maybe it was a good deed that will pay off in heaven. Who would have figured? Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the dangerous theory you presented on Classy or whatever her name is, was wrong. We have not found a motive or a weapon for her. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Actually, I want to talk about this uh, crime some more before I tell you what I think about this hardness. I'm listening. There's still 20 possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. Revolutionary era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I'm just gonna say nothing. There's a little pause. He says nothing as well. Okay, so once more, Classy escaped? Absolutely. There's no other way to go about it. We screwed up. He's made his peace with it. He's had time to do so. The goddamn footprints. Yes. God curse the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. <laughs> I'm ready to hear what you think about solving crimes now. Solving crimes is super easy. Really? Because to me, it seems solving crimes is... Hard. 
He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The dr aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. We should check Miss Katarzyn Alas Alassie's room upstairs. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Newly placed glass, shining in the morning light. You hear traffic outside, back in the world again. The stereo 8 player has been reunited with its right speaker. You see gleaming white animal, no bottles inside. Look, the door is open. You can walk right into Kim's room. Oh, Kim. The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. Medicinal supplies on the cupboard. Merochrome, the scalpel, antibiotics. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You make out notes on this and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. The bathroom mirror has been wiped completely clean. You see the reflection of your face in the mirror, even now adorned with the expression. Sure. It's too late. Like an image on film. The... Yeah, the, the face is still here and it's not gonna go anywhere. Whatever. God, what a shit show. More people. Do you remember someone? Oh no. God, this is gonna start a fight. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. Looks like she left something on the table. What is it? Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift? What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun. Yet. But I don't like gifts. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. Okay. Let's steal her shit now. Or did I steal it before? The medicine pity. It's empty. She's really cleaned this out. Mm hmm She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. A red thread, made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. You see the same two neon-lit shapes. A this is belly. A ray of backward motion. A red thread runs through the neon-lit shapes of a man and a woman. A ray of backward motion explodes from the man's mouth to the roof outside to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez. B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? 
lead. It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime. The island in the bay. Is she trying to tell us the shot came from the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That is where the threat seems to point. Okay. So it is, he says. For a second he seems tired. Seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to go to the island. <sighs> the lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. He is trying to justify it to himself. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Of course, of course. I'm in. He takes a second to gather himself, then says... How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Lillian, the net picker. She's staring her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Okay, great. Look, a handful of dried white wild wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. Move your hand, fast. The wind brushes them off the roof. They're gone. Oh. The thread is tied to the antenna. So what do you have to say about all this, guard? Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. I did, thank you. Big improvement. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was an honest effort. I was watching until it went down. Crawled inside, then bullets started flying. Anyway. <clears throat> he really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by, in the danger zone, so to say. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The stay is free, the drinks are not. It just felt I needed to specify that. Where did everyone go? Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. Are Lena and Morel still, still in town? Ah, them. Nice people, but no. Lena said they were going back to Jamrock. I saw them pass by outside. This was before the fight started. I'm glad she got out of here before all that. Bullets flying and stuff. People inside were quite terrified, you know. I had to take action and step outside too. Okay, yes. That was for the best. Yes, you know. And I went outside and took care of it. Everybody calmed down. Felt like the right thing to do. But we weren't done looking for the fast men. I mean, you're a detective. Perhaps you can track them down. Shouldn't be that hard. Exactly. But all in due time. Crypto business is not a priority right now. You'll see her again one day. You know it. Things went like they did for a reason. Oh, fine, hero cop. Lena left a forwarding address. 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock. If you see them again, do give them my best. What happened to the man with the sunglasses? I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. By the way, where were you when it happened? Where was I? How do you think I know the crazy shit you pulled off out there? I was there, out on the balcony, protecting my establishment. So yeah, I guess I'm what you call a badass. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. Yeah, I guess you are a badass. Yeah, I don't know. The clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself. Stepping onto that balcony. Alright. Thanks. 
No problem. They'll come back. They always do. I missed an entire day. I was really hoping I could just redo all that. That I just made a mistake and I could redo it. And I coordination needs to level up. So this rhetoric. Or maybe not. Just one. Oh boy. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his beer can in welcome. Oh, it's you. Didn't think we'd see you walking anytime soon. Elaine, look, it's the cowardly cop. Huh? What? He looks up, his eyes full of confusion, as if he'd just woken up from a deep sleep. He's very, very drunk. Our condolences for your losses. He says with a little nod, but the remaining hardy boys don't seem to register his words. Is he okay? Does he look like he's okay? He does not. His unshaven face is almost gray, and he reeks of piss, sweat, and booze. While still alive, he has abandoned his own body to decomposition. Yeah, I suppose that was a dumb question. No shit, Marlon. What's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now that Titus is dead? The, 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 Titus is fucking dead. What's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys? Look around you, man. This shit is done. There are no more Hardy Boys. You two are just going to go back to holding containers in the harbor? No, man. I don't know. I guess the Union will still be policing the neighborhood, but who's going to do it now? You, Eugene. Me? No, man. I'm not a leader. You know, Titus only recruited me because I play the guitar. Said the team could use the morale boost. If any of them had leadership capacity beside Titus, it's him. Keep encouraging him. You can do it. Eugenie boys has quite the ring, doesn't it? What? Fuck no. If I'd stay, we'd keep the name to honor Titus. That's a noble thought. That's a noble thought. You're going to do all right. No one is born to lead. Titus was. But thanks for the vote of confidence. If I don't stick around, it's all over. So, I guess I sort of have to now. Yeah, man. You know, you know, you got this. You got this. I haven't got shit, Al. Any idea what happened to Classy? Damn songbird of misery, that one. The man chased his head. And do you have any information on this songbird of misery? God said she took off some time before the firefight. That's all. Trying to remember if there was anything. Oh, yeah. He said she seemed to be in a real hurry. She's gone. Face it. Take care, guys. Yeah, you too. It's a rough world out there. It's not easy being a cop. We were too hard on you. Both of you. We shouldn't have fucked with you like we did. You got between us and a lot of bullets in that fight. Matinees owes you one. That's kind of you to say. Take care of your friend, okay? I will. You take care of yours. He nods to you. A sharp pain shoots up your side and into your stomach. You must not look too good. Luckily, it passes. Well... Un jour, je serai de retour près de toi. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. 
Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply, fingers? You could buy some smokes, light up a ciggy and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. Sure. Wait, who are you? Well, also, F5. Officer, care to play a game with the lonely old man? Oh no, where is... where's your friend? Actually, never mind. Wouldn't be the same. Where is Rene? The prick is gone. I... I can barely believe it. But he's really gone. He is trying to retain his jolly facade, but the underlying sadness casts a deep shadow over his wrinkled face. Gone? Gone where? Hell, most likely. He was an absolute Kent. When was he killed during the mercenary tribunal? Oh, he would have liked that. Violent lives ending violently. That's how he wanted to go. Sadly, it was not the case. I offer my sincere condolences. Yes, we are both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is, part of life really. But to know someone for 79 years, then one day they're just gone. I just don't know anymore about anything really. But you, you must need something. Bye for now. I need to check on Kuno. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. What kind of vehicle, vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Reconstruct the movement? The tire tracks were left here by an mm. unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message, written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Why that pang of guilt again? <laughs> it's because you did it, asshole. What happened next? The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building, before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. I think I got it. Kuno. Everyone says you started crying in the middle of a firefight and then bled like a pig. I guess that was cool. <laughs> I guess that's true. Cool, cool, cool. That's very cool to Kuno. Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now. Kuno's going to treat you different. Kuno doesn't reward weakness. It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. Feels good for some reason. Okay. I'm off. Watch out, pig! It's a dangerous world out there. But Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to mean? Who knows? <laughs> All right, kid. This door is made of metal, and no nope. one answers. We should return in the evening, at 9 p.m. the earliest. Okay, maybe we still can. And we still can do it, maybe. If we come after 9 p.m. That isn't <coughs> just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers 
the iconography of communism, in other words. Look out, Kim. There are communists around here. I'll keep my armistice handy, detective. Inspect the symbol closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. What does it evoke in me? Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on a wall. You hear someone walking around inside. What do you have to say? Give me a moment. Nothing, yes. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Precinct 57, we've been attacked. I repeat, Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi and... Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. It's been this way for a while now. My guess is the Union is listening in on our conversations and jamming outward communications to protect themselves from Cronel. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is unaffected. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us cut off the grid completely. Okay. Silence. Hello? My man, you're alive. Almost. Kind of. Sort of alive? It hurts like hell, man. Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, but I heard it was quite the encounter. Had a strong sense of finality to it. Sure did, I thought I almost died. So what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is local union muscle were behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed, even if it kind of turned into a shit show. I'm still looking around, with the threats to tie up. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you, but hey, you're still breathing, right? Yeah, that's all for now. Officer, what happened? You're wounded. Why are you wounded? You look terrible. She sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. You seem angry. Why? Look at you. You can barely walk. Some people hurt me. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on Rue de Saint-Guilaine. It's nothing to be worried about, madame. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? We need to get to, the I to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. She We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. And no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye. What if I want a rock? See, that makes me not want to lend you my skiff. On a boat, rocking leads to capsizing. That there is an absolutely 100% rock-free skiff. You got that? Thank you. You'll use your skiff to get there then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. <sighs> Alright, let's roll. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle, and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. 
Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. I mean, should we wait until 9 p.m. to talk to the smoker on the balcony? Will he help us at all? What else is there to do? We failed to do anything. Didn't get the party started in the cathedral, the church. We didn't sing karaoke, we didn't... We didn't save everyone. We didn't arrest Classy, we didn't do anything. We didn't get the piss jacket. Ah, to hell with it. If anything, there's always a second playthrough. There's always... I can always redo things. This is the story I'm going with. This is... this is my story. Get in and ride to the island. I should have saved before that, but... <sighs> Harry, you idiot. God, I I got so emotional like when he almost died. And, oh my god. slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then, there's silence. There is very little wind here today. The ghost is standing still. You look at your arms, then the cliffs above you. Let's go. Climb out. Okay, let's leave here for today. It's been a wild ride. Um, see you next time. Bye. Hope you hope you're enjoying um, so far. Because I'm I'm emotionally compromised. But we're continuing, and yeah. yeah. Bye.